Well, greetings, everybody. Welcome once again to the Rec Poker Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Steve Fredland. I am at uh, Rec Poker Steve on Poker Stars, and I believe life and poker are better experienced surrounded by the right people. And as always, we are joined by our panel. We have the wonderful John Somsky. I'm John Somsky, Poker Geek MN on Poker Stars, and I like to promote all things poker. Nice. Rob Washam was with us. And on Poker Stars, I'm Rabman50. And guess what? If you're never caught bluffing, you're not bluffing enough. <laughs> Jim Reed. Hi there. I'm Bluff Starini on the home games. And uh, for my birthday this year, I got an autographed copy from poker celebrity Rick Day uh, holding my book and sending on his best. Thanks, Rick. You're a champ. <laughs> Chris Jones. <laughs> Uh, I'm 5x5 five five on PokerStars and Twitter, and uh, over the past few weeks, I've finally been, during quarantine, trying to learn some chip tricks. So, sort of ah, I'll look forward to those. Yeah. And we have a special guest panelist tonight, Mark Prashan. Yeah, I'm website Mark, and I once won $100 with 7 Deuce Offsuit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. All right. Yes. Well, there's there's the panel, guys. Uh, thanks to our official sponsor, Running Aces Racetrack Casino and Hotel, and our other podcast sponsors, Learn Pro Poker and Website Amp. This is episode 187, and today uh, we're going to talk a bit about the website relaunch and what it means for you uh, as part of Rec Poker Nation. So really excited about that. But uh, as you'll discover, it's more than just a website we're talking about. Uh, so hopefully you hang in there. I think we're going to have a great uh, conversation tonight about what this means for all of us. Uh, later in the show, we'll do our regular panelist round robin. Uh, we'll get some details on everything that we have going on. Uh, but a couple of things that I want you to be aware of. Obviously, the website has relaunched. Uh, celebrations, bells and whistles. Uh, if we had a producer, we'd have all sorts of cool sound effects. Uh, and that's going to be the topic for today. But real quick, you can join for free. You can try the premium membership for free. And you can get a big discount on your annual membership. So keep that in mind as you're listening today. And also the OPA Invitational, the online play and hang, is coming up this Wednesday. And I'll reveal the names uh, of the lucky participants at the end of today's show. Uh, so with that, um, let, let's talk a little bit about this thing. The website, rec.poker, the, the URL has not changed, but the website looks radically different. Uh, and so we're just going to have a conversation about what that looks like. Uh, the first thing that I want to mention is uh, something I've said uh, many times is that, you know, the website is just a tool. Uh, it, it's a very good tool. <laughs> we're very excited about the tool. But at the end of the day, uh, our goal is not to build a website. Our goal is not even to increase memberships. Uh, our goal is actually to build a community, a vibrant and encouraging, a positive community of people that are learning this game together, love hanging out together, they're building relationships. Man, if, if that can be what Rec Poker really truly uh, continues to, to grow into, uh, I would be a very happy guy. So I just want to put the caveat out there. We're going to be talking a lot about the website, but it's a tool. It's a tool to build community. That is really what we are all about. Um, so let's talk a bit about, uh, when, I think maybe even like, let's talk, talk about vocabulary a little bit. We talk about membership. We talk about community. We talk about nation. We talk about all of these different things. What are we talking about? Maybe Jim, maybe if you want to start us off there, what are some of the words that people maybe heard thrown around and now how do those translate into what we're talking about going forward? Yeah, well, we, we've always talked about Rec Poker Nation and I think that Rec Poker Nation, you're a part of it no matter where you are, you don't have to be part of a website. You don't have to be a premium member of anything. You don't even have to listen to the podcast. If you feel like you're part of Rec Poker Nation, I think you're going to fit in there. We're a pretty self-selecting bunch when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, but if you want to actually get involved with us, you need to be part of the Rec Poker community. And the Rec Poker community is just a place and a group within the nation where we actually engage and talk to each other and we help each other learn and we hang out and have fun together. And we tried to do that before over email and Twitter and uh, we had a, a video service and Discord, but it wasn't really what we wanted to have it all together. And that's what Rec Poker is now. The Rec.Poker community is all in one place here. You can watch videos, you can talk on the forums, um, and then, so, so there's the Rec Poker Nation, there's the Rec Poker community, 
And a community account is free. You can get a free membership in the Rec Poker community just by signing up with your email and picking a fun username that describes who you are. And uh, that doesn't cost anything. And there's lots of stuff that goes on throughout the month just for community members. If you do want to take your learning to the next level, we have a premium membership for $15 a month. And that's what that premium membership refers to. Premium members get to join in our video conversations. Um, Like Martha, for instance, is here tonight taking part in this uh, podcast and chatting your questions in the box, which is great. I love it when Martha comes to join us on these. and there are a, a, a up, bunch Martha? of other, Martha, we love you. Uh, there, there are a bunch of other uh, great, a great perks to being a, pre, a premium member: the book study, the learning with content partners, uh, Chris's seminars, um, and then there's the Wrecking Crew, which I think I'm almost too excited to talk about right now. We might need to come back to the Wrecking Crew later because it's just too exciting, too much excitement. What do you think, Steve? It's just too much. Well, let's let, talk a little bit about Rob. Maybe you can chime in there too. But yeah, I want to talk a little bit about. Uh, you know, becoming a member and that sort of thing. But go ahead, Rob. Um, no, I was just going to say that um, the forums are are turning out to be quite quite fun, and you see the some of the conversation going on right now that's going on in there. By the way, Steve, I'm 17 years older than you, and I can I can still throw a GIF out there if I feel like. <laughs> you know, <GIF. laughs> you're not too old for a GIF. I said I was too old for it. <laughs> <laughs> you're not. You're not. Well, that, anyway. that's, you, you talked about that. Yeah. I mean, the, because we had talked, the, the forums had started, we weren't able to do some of those fun things like like right. putting out images and that sort of thing. So, you know, the community said, man, it would be fun to be able to do that. All right. Well, we got the genius Mark Prashan uh, with us. And Mark <laughs> said, oh, yeah, I think we can probably make that happen. And I think it was probably 45 seconds later, it was done. <laughs> trying my best, trying to keep it under a minute. <laughs> and there some, there's some excellent gifs out there already just on that one uh on that one uh form yeah. so that's a fun group. fantastic yeah and, and that's but part I think, of the goal I, go, go ahead yeah Ron. that's that's part of it i mean we're all just having fun out here and we're learning um i there's so many people that i'm connecting with now that you know people are asking me for connections within the community and it's just a lot of fun as people that we've met on these home games or the play and hangs or whatever it is. And, and you put faces to names and, and it's, it's just really a lot of fun. It just, you, it, it expands your whole, um, I guess your poker community as we call it. Right. Yeah. And it, it's just, uh, just a guess. I think it's just a lot of fun, no matter how you approach it. If you just want to get involved in the home games, just want to jump in the forums and make posts occasionally. It's just, uh, it's just fun. I love it. And I think, you know, you, you mentioned that if you just want to try it out too, because I think, you know, I've encountered several people that have, have emailed me or, or gotten a hold of me through text or whatever that they're sort of like, all right, I've, I've been part of poker communities before. I've been part of uh, online chat rooms or whatever, but they either end up sort of a disaster or it's a lot of people waging war against each other, or it maybe really isn't even safe because of my, my personal experiences or whatever it might be. And people are finding that, you know, as they've trusted the rec poker community, uh, they felt at home. They felt good. They felt like I can put a post out there and not get ripped on for how I played it, but instead actually get some positive feedback in terms of how I played it and actually become a better player. And so I think that's part of the culture that we tried to set early on. But yeah, Rob, you mentioned the forums. I mean, I, I'm super excited about, about reading the forums. I'm like, man, I need more time in the day because there's a lot of good stuff out there uh, and a lot of really good engagements. So that, is, that is super fun. Go ahead, Jim. I was going to say one of the one of the cool, and it's funny we didn't even know what to expect with some of this stuff. But the the way that the community has expanded to fill the space is really really impressive, and we're getting some great posters in the forum. Jamel, ARW, Binkley. Uh, there's people, uh, Razy Daisy, putting stuff out there at a really high level, and some really good uh, some really good analysis in there, and so that's been great. And I, I, we've even started talking to the guests that are coming on the show and saying, you know, if you want to dip in, go yeah. get an account, dip into the forums and pull a hand to play from. And I've seen the guests, are these pros, chatting with members and, and I've seen them active in the site and we're getting some great reviews from them too. So, I mean, how cool is it? You're, we're, we're rubbing elbows with, uh, with some of the guests in the forums and stuff like that. It's great. Well, and I think that's part of, you know, the community that we're building too is that, you know, we're we're sort of approachable. We just are, we're regular people. And I think for a lot of the pros, they they've sort of lost touch a little bit with that. 
sometimes in the in the worlds that they run in. And we've had that feedback from from Maria Ho, from Daniel Negreanu, from Moneymaker that are like, God, it was just so fun to talk to you guys. Like it was just like the old days before I became famous. I was just one of these folks playing poker and I loved it. And so uh, I, I think it's attractive to them. And so I think for them to jump in the community and yeah, I think it, he's our guest next week. Uh, one of the, one of the authors has jumped, jumped in there already and said, man, I'd like to put, put, <laughs> put some things out there and get some questions from people in advance. So yeah, I think that's, it, you know, I, I, we keep saying community, 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 but that's, it's what it is. And um, you know, I love some of you guys' other thoughts about where you're seeing community happening within rec poker, because it, it is different than, other membership sites. My, there's a lot of amazing membership sites, uh, just fantastic, you know, uh, content and that sort of thing. But we are different in, in how we do things. And so I'd be curious if any of you other guys have some thoughts on either what you've seen or what you're expecting or, or hoping for with, with the new platform. I mean, I've been just so impressed with the, the chats in the home games and a lot of the home game related stuff in particular, John does a great job of putting out the posts sort of updating with the re- recent results. And there's always this kind of narrative about how the final table went and who beat who for the top two. And it's something that, I mean, the rec poker nation does take very seriously. We're out there, <laughs> you know, crawling through blood and broken glass to get to that bronze poker, uh, rec poker uh, trophy pin. And, um, but what really stands out to me is like people are really helping each other in the chat. There's a yeah. good mix of like giving each other a hard time, but also like like often what happens is we'll just tangent for three minutes and talk about one street of action on one hand and how we might have played that differently. And uh, so seeing that start in the home games and then people are posting hands from the home games in the forums. And so we're having lots of chats in the forums with people that were involved in the hand on both sides. So we're really getting to explore various points of the decision tree. Um, yeah. through that kind of community. So the home game community has been a really fun thing for me to be enjoying. Yeah, and, and we've got a couple more people jump on here uh, right now. People that are part of the community can jump on here. And you mentioned the the chatters in the home game. We've got Danny Schneider's jumped on here. Probably the greatest chatter, I most love encouraging Danny. guy in the nation uh, yeah. is, is out there Super right now. Super fan. Listening in, uh, he's got a question for tonight too that he'll chime in on. Josh Schwartz has joined us. So uh, thanks you guys for jumping in there. Uh, Mr. Somsky. Well, I was just going to say I really like the way uh, the now we can organize the the home game stuff. Before on the old site, we had all the stuff there, but it was a little bit of a hodgepodge and a mess, and it was hard to find what you uh, had. Now you can go look at the different series, see exactly what's going on. There's a clear spot that I can post last night's results, and yet we have the long-term standings available in an, a different, easy-to-find location. So, And, you know, if anyone has any suggestions on things they'd like to see uh, differently or in addition, just uh, hit me up and let me know. Uh, you're the best, John. I, I, I'd be curious, Mark, uh, to get your perspective on this. So, so Mark Prashan, you know, we didn't know each other until, well, like most of these guys, I just met you guys within the last year. Uh, Mark's down in Texas. Uh, we get connected. He's like, man, I love what you get, what you're doing. Is there anything that I can do to help? And here we are um, months later and you've built this amazing site. Like uh, it's amazing how these things work out, but we had rec poker day at running aces in Minnesota and Mark flies up uh, to, to just hang out with the community. And so, uh, first of all, Mark, I mean, publicly, I've said this privately, but thank you for all you've done, but I'd be curious, um, you know, I know you're, you're, when you're designing websites, you're so much trying to get the pulse of, of a group, a pulse of a community, a pulse of whatever it is. I'm curious how you, you know, what you learned about rec poker, but also how did you integrate the importance of community into the site that you were designing? Yeah, well, let me first just say thanks for having me on. This is really fun. Um, this is definitely my favorite podcast ever. So to be on it is is pretty cool. So um, thanks again. Um, but as far as the getting a vibe for the community, that's part of what attracted me to the, the podcast and to the community, you know, even before any of this website stuff existed. Um, so it's been fun for me as a, you know, a long time listener and, you know, I've, I've been along for the ride since before this year. And, um, it was really clear to me talking to you guys in, in some of our initial meetings that you weren't about building an empire or this giant profit machine that that's not your game. You we're truly all about the community and providing value to people. And that's pretty rare. Um, I've worked with a lot of folks, you know, designing websites with them. And a lot of times they're like, I guess I need a website. I guess I want it to make money. And that's really as deep as it goes. But 
it's a uh, it's something unique here at Red Poker, and it's been a lot of fun to be a part of it. Uh, so cool. Thank yeah. Thanks for your kind words. I think you know some people I think are, are hesitant to think. Well, is this really just? Are they just used car salesmen, snake oil salesmen, whatever? I mean, it's just not. I don't know. I I never know what to say to people to like to tell them no. Like I'm 50 years old. And I want to live the rest of my life surrounded by people I really enjoy. Like, that's it. I did a TED Talk on surrounding yourself with the right peeps in your Jeep. Like, this is who I am. Like, I, it, you know, if we make money, that's great. Don't get me wrong. It's great to make money. But that's not the point. And so, you know, luckily, uh, people that have been attracted to it are people like yourself, Mark. People like Chris, Jim, Rob, John, uh, Taylor, Andrew that are saying the same thing for me. I want to learn the game. I want to be surrounded by people I enjoy. And so I think that it's just so inherent in and what we're doing that I can't imagine it ever changing. Like if I think the second that I tried to build an empire, I think Somsky would hit me upside the head and <laughs> tell me to knock it off. Well, what, what, uh, what else guys, what, what else is kind of on your mind with that? Or we can shift a little bit um, to, to talking about the website a little bit. Um, you know, let, let, let's maybe do that. Let's talk a bit about, what are some of the, the broad sections of the website that people should know about that are maybe looking for particular things? Uh, you know, whoever is the first to unmute, will give them the mic, Jim. Uh, let's talk kind of high level. Again, we can't get into all the detail, but what should people know about uh, as they're coming into the site? Steve knows me so well. He's like, now, Jim, we can't get into all the details well, here. It's just a few <laughs> it was words a only. Statement, about you. <laughs> but, well, I know how fired up you are about all yeah, of those things. And, and the thing is, the rabbit holes are, are fantastically oh, yeah. fun rabbit holes, but they're still yeah. rabbit holes. And, and, I, and I should say, on, uh, on July 29th, uh, Wednesday night, we'll be doing a much more in-depth walkthrough of the site. We can go through and share all the stuff with videos. So there's an opportunity for that. And look for, look for notices about that. Um, the thing that I think is really cool is the events calendar. It takes a nerd like me to think a calendar is cool, but this is pretty cool. Uh, so all the different types of events that we have are organized by the type of event they are, whether it's watch or engage or play. And then you can click on any day of the year and you'll see all the events that are happening that day and you can click on them and see uh, different events that are similar to them. So you can really just find one thing you like, fall down a rabbit hole of your own folks, and then you never know what you're going to find at the bottom. Uh, but go, the events calendar, I think, is pretty pretty sophisticated when it comes to looking at all the different ways we offer things and, and how they're similar and how you might find things that you like if you find something that you like. So check that out for sure. Yeah, I love and I love how you guys structured it too to be like, okay, here if you want to engage, here's how you engage. If you want to watch, here's what you can do. You know, that the, all those different things, the way that you guys are so strategic about it. let's label things, categorize things, tag things so that if I'm the kind of person I go there, I want to find out when are all the book studies, I can just find out what all the book studies are. If I want to go find out when can I listen to the podcast, I can or watch the podcast or participate in the podcast. Or I, I just love, I mean, that, there was a lot of work that you guys went through to try to get it just right. And so I think, I think, man, nailed it. Jonesy? Yeah, I mean, I, and I guess the, the, the flip, flip side of the, the uh, calendar is, the, is that content archive. I mean, I think we've got everything um, that we've ever done and ever will do will show up right there and it's easily searchable, sortable, fileable, findable. Um, it's, it's really great. I mean, I think that, you know, that, that there's a ton of content there and then there's the forums right below it, which um, are the kind of live living conversations that we're all having about that content, about the plans we're playing, about the things we're thinking about, the things we're confused about, the things we're struggling with. Um, and that, I think that's, that's, it's only going to grow. And the more people who jump on there, the better it gets. So I, I'm excited for both of those things. So we've got the, we have the events so you can find out everything that's going on and there's a ton of stuff going on. Like there's something every day, like there, there's a tournament to play or there's something new that's just been released to watch or, or there's some other way to engage or there, it's amazing how much stuff is out there. And the beauty is we're not, we don't think everybody's going to do everything. So don't get overwhelmed with it. Choose what you like, you know, choose the stuff that you like and engage in those sorts of things. We're hoping to offer enough things uh, that everybody can, can get full <laughs> can, uh, on what, what they want um, and, and have enough choices. But yeah, and then the content is, I mean, I'll put our content up against any, anybody's. Uh, I think it's fantastic um, what we have out there and you can go there and again, sort of, let me, I want to go watch all of the, the Brokus book study conversations. They're all there. You just go there, click on it, and you can watch all the videos right there. Oh, Jones put together, you know, these the seminars. So the idea was from January through 
through June to prepare you for a big multi-table tournament. Uh, oh, I can go out and watch all of those seminars. So it's, yeah, it, it's amazing. And I think it's just really easy to use. Uh, you know, we're really close to it. So we could be jaded, but you know, the, the feedback that we've gotten from people so far is no, it's really easy to use. So you, know, you can find out the events piece, you got the content, uh, you've, you've got um, the forums. What else, do, what else should people be aware of that's out there on the site? Well, there's also a lot of ability to speak outside of the forums. Um, you can talk to other members. Um, you can comment on posts and that kind of things as well. So there's a few different ways to share ideas. And we tried to make as many different kind of areas for that as possible so that people can get comfortable um, in, different, in different areas exchanging ideas. And, and also, I think... Um, Maybe this is time to talk about the Wrecking Crew, Steve. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think you're too, are you too excited or are you okay? I, I'm, I'm still pretty excited, but I think we should. <laughs> so uh, the Wrecking Crew is basically, it's the next level. If, if you want to get more involved with Wreck Poker, and if you want to have a platform that lets you share your love of poker with the world, then the Wrecking Crew is for you. So if you become a member of the Wrecking Crew, you're going to get wreck.poker slash your name. And it's going to be a page on our site dedicated to you, your story, the things that you love about poker. Um, if, if you want to offer services to the members, coaching, video review, things like that, uh, we can offer that through our shop. If you want to just have a blog there where people can talk to you and use you as a free resource, that's perfectly fine as well. We're going to set you up with uh, your name at rec.poker email address. Uh, you get a playlist on the Rec Poker YouTube channel. Um, so there's lots of ways by joining the Wrecking Crew that you get to share your message of love about poker with the world. And then we also get to take advantage of your experience and your expertise by bringing you in on some of these learning activities that happen uh, for some of our premium members. And that's, that's just a great way to get more involved with Rec Poker, but also with the poker world in general. And, and I'm, I am really excited about the wrecking crew we've already got a couple people signing up we've already had a couple people um working with uh coaches through the site as a part of the wrecking crew and it feels like it, we're, we're putting people in touch with people that's what rec poker really should be about yeah and you, and you mentioned some of that so some of the the coaching the video analysis all of that stuff's available and we tap into our resident experts to do some of those things uh, we have had people do video analysis where they submit video and uh, we break it down and we just have more fun doing that, you know, uh, learning ourselves. Uh, people have done the one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, people have done database review type of things. And so those are things that are going to grow and grow. And yeah, part of the wrecking crew as part of that, you can be part of those things where you can actually, uh, you know, participate in those things. And I think that's a fantastic offering, uh, which, you know, some of that flows through our shop. So, you know, we've got our, our shop out there so you can look around and see what coaching is available, uh, all of that. But we also are now the merchandise stuff is scaled way up. Uh, if you want to get a pink uh, zippered hoodie, uh, you can. That's embroidered with your name on the left shoulder. You can do that now. Before it was, here's the black hoodie, here's the black hat. Uh, you know, we felt pretty good about that, <laughs> but, uh, but now it's pretty much get, get what you want uh, and, and we'll make that happen for you. And we're, you know, we do a bulk sort of shipment so we can keep the prices down a bit. Uh, but yeah, all, all kinds of cool stuff. Anything else coming to mind, folks, as far as what the, what's out there that people need to be aware of? I was just a little disappointed that the black and yellow prints were twice as expensive as all the other yep. stuff in the shop. I still don't quite understand that, but there was something. It has nothing to do with Pittsburgh Steelers. Nope. Yeah. So we'll look into that though. Yeah, I noticed You'll see the same the, thing uh, with the green and gold. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah, I noticed that the purple was very cheap. So yeah. I think that's <laughs> <laughs> let's just say f the color purple f is featured prominently on the website <laughs> here and there. There's a little. Uh, we snuck in a little yellow too, and of course as, some as green for be. the felt. But uh, yeah, as it should be. <laughs> so there's a couple of comments coming in from the folks that are listening. So so Josh Schwartz uh, out there in Colorado says, if you put people first, the rest falls into place. Uh, that's what we believe the same thing. Uh, I think the, you know, I don't see that as the strategy like, oh, okay, we're going to, we're going to get here. So let's put people first. Let's pretend we care. Uh, I, you know, I've experienced that in the corporate world where I was in, in a meeting and people said, if you want your people to love the company, you have to pretend that you care. You have to let them think that you care. I'm like, well, shouldn't you just care? Isn't that like the better solution? Um, but and I know that's not what Josh is saying, but totally agree. Like we're not, at the end of it, if we feel like we can build a great, uh, positive, vibrant community, 
the rest of it will take care of itself. Totally believe that. Thank you for that. Danny Schneider says one-on-one coaching is amazing. I personally give my recommendations for Steve and Jim for using, I should have read this first, so I would have put name, my name out, for using this great resource. Watch out, Chris and Rob. You'll be next to pick your poker brains. <laughs> So, so, so Danny's full engaged. He's coming after all of us, all of you guys. So, <laughs> and anything else that stands out about the website? Uh, Chris, Rob, John, Mark, anything else, Jim? No, just come, come make, get a free community account. Come see what we're talking about. Yeah. And Mark? come, you know, oh, make ahead. this your own, you know, find, find members to connect with, uh, use the forums, tell us what you'd like, what you'd like to see if there's things that you want to, you'd, like to see change or i mean we just added this ability to put images and gifs gifs and you know <laughs> because people wanted it so like you know just tell us tell us what you what you're looking for and um we, we want to make this uh, as sort of popular and user friendly as possible I love that you said that. That's that's the thing. We always tell people feedback is the lifeblood of this thing. So we don't know what you're thinking unless you tell us. So so do that. And then you mentioned connecting with people too. So uh, you can choose to connect with people. I suppose it's sort of like a friending thing on Facebook or whatever. But oh, I like the way Chris thinks. I'm gonna con- I'm gonna ask him to connect if he says yes. Now we're connected. Now I can DM back and forth with Chris if if that's something uh, that I feel like I want to do. Mark, did you have something there? Yeah, I was just going to chime in on that. You pretty much nailed it there, Steve, that um, in addition to having all the, the content and the forums and the different stuff out there, there's uh, direct messaging once you've connected with somebody. You know, say you've, you've connected with somebody that you're, you've interacted with, with a few times and uh, then you can, you know, be their buddy and send messages back and forth and uh, come after them if you, you take a big pop from them in the home game and <laughs> <laughs> right. you know, just keep in touch. And uh, then I think the only other thing that we haven't touched on is that there's also groups. So, like, for example, there's a group for running Aces players. So that's another way to interact with maybe uh, a certain bubble of people that you might have more in common with or might be able to keep up with them. Yep. Good stuff. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, people are listening to the podcast. Uh, obviously, we, we have a very good listenership to the podcast. Thank you all. That means a ton to us. And hopefully we're adding value. Uh, a fraction of those people that listen to the podcast are members. Thank you for that. But there's a there's a whole big chunk of people that are listening around the world. Uh, and we're grateful for that. Um, but for, for those folks that are listening that are doing that, why should they consider going to rec.poker and signing up for a free membership? We'll, we'll talk about the premium stuff later. But just signing up. It's free. It's just an email, uh, and you're part then of this com- of this community. You know, you're, you move from the nation to the community, right? Um, why? Why would you know? And we know we have listeners around the world. Why would they do this? What would be the advantage of that? Well, you're just never going to find a place quite like it. Honestly, you're just not going to find a place where people genuinely want to engage together, want to have friendly, respectful conversations about strategy where you can disagree, but not berate, you know, uh, where you can come and share the things that you're not sure about. You know, how are you supposed to learn if you're never able to talk about anything you're not already sure about? Um, <laughs> so, right. So that, that's the biggest thing. And I think is it's just, you know, like you said, Steve, there's lots of great training sites out there. Um, but I think we've got to beat, um, when it comes to community and as Josh Schwartz is saying in the, <laughs> yeah. in the, in the chat here, because it's the nets and it's got the redraw to the coconuts. So you just can't <laughs> beat that. You can't beat that, Josh. Well said. So, I mean, a lot of times people hear membership and they immediately go, okay, it's a paid membership. And yes, we do have paid memberships, but what, what you're talking about, Jim, for this community membership is this is free. So, okay, I get my email, then is it really like that? Is it really benefits to being a free member? Or is it, you know, this is just a trick to get me to buy the, the premium stuff? You know, it sounds crazy, but like most of what goes on there is based around the free community. Um, we do a lot of the premium training things, but they're, they're kind of densely packed into certain parts of the site. And most of what actually goes on at the site is part of the community building that goes on there. So, um, really the only thing that you're missing out on uh, at, at, with your free community membership is, is some of that elevated uh, learning material. And even that's available for a seven day trial it, at any point during your community membership, just say, I'd like to try being a premium member for seven days. I recommend doing it right before something really cool is coming up. And then you get to just do <laughs> that cool thing for free. And it's just like you were a community member the whole time. Um, but I mean, it, and again, when we put this together, we didn't really know what to expect. I'm actually surprised at how expanded the community has become and how we, we just needed to give it this place to flourish. 
um, because it's all the same people that were just on Discord or on YouTube or on Twitter or on this other website. But having them all here in the one place feels like it feeds off each other. You get you you really do form relationships with the people, seeing them in the forums and in the comments and playing in the home games and putting screen names together and stuff like that. I've made real friends here. I've made real friends here. And a year ago, you know, I didn't know how to spell Steve's name. And it, it, well, maybe, maybe not quite a year, but uh, <laughs> it's hard to believe. Yeah. Like w- when I had my birthday recently and all these rec poker folks sent that, those amazing video messages in, that doesn't happen at other free training sites for, for any hobby. Um, and poker players are the worst. Are you kidding? The fact that we got that out of <laughs> poker players? Oh my God. This, it's a special place. It's just a special place. It really is. Anybody else anything to add, add to that? Well, Mark, maybe talk talk a little bit from your perspective. I know we talked about how you integrate community into this thing, but what what are you most excited about as the guy that's built a bunch of websites and you know wants to do more and more uh, in, in that sort of thing, especially in the poker community? I think you've got a real gift and a connection to the community there. But you know what what excites you about this thing, whether it's the overall structure or content or whatever it is. Yeah, it's a. Uh... Man, hearing all this is just music to my ears. Um, to to be able to build a a community like this, or I guess a tool for the community, where there's already people rearing to go. Like you said, there were people scattered in different corners of the internet, and you know, fragmented. Um, so to be able to build a site and just see, you know, within a week, there's tons of interactions happening there, and um, it, it really seems like we're we're hitting the initial goals of, you know, what's the best thing we can do for the community? Can we give it a place to, to grow and, and to breathe? And so that's, that's really been exciting. Love it. That well, week is, that week has been the longest month of my life. We, we literally flipped it last week, didn't we? I know. Oh my God. It was, wasn't, it hasn't even, hasn't even been, yeah, it was like Monday night, wasn't it? Like late, wow. late Monday night. So as we're recording this at seven o'clock central right now, on Monday the 13th, it was, yeah, not quite a week ago. Man, Way was, to go, Mark. It, it has been a long Mark. month. <laughs> what a, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, a lot, it's really, been an exciting really. week slash month. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. yes. Well, you know, so so we're, we're pretty clear. Okay, the next steps, go to rec.poker, check it out. If if we've earned your trust, sign up for a free membership. Jump into these things. Come come listen to the podcast. Uh, you know, make sure you've got all, all, there's a million things that you can do with that free membership. And then if you're like, man, I, I love these guys. I love how it's working. I want to learn more from the people like Chris Jones and Rob Washman, the book study and Somsky and Reed and Moss and Andrew and all of the partners that we have. We have all of these great partners. And that's another piece of the content that you guys know we already do is every month you get to hear some of this premium content from others like, like solve for why and learn pro poker and Jonathan little and, and all these, but that's all part of the content. So if you get to the point where you're like, man, I want to learn more from these guys. Okay. Then, then sign up for that. But you don't have to worry about that right now. Just come into the community. So that's your first step. Check out the website, be impressed. Uh, Give us your feedback. If you're not, we want to hear that too. But uh, we had a couple of questions that came in through the forums. This is a new thing we're doing. You guys, when you're a free member, you can get into the forums and then every episode Jim has put out there that you can submit questions to who's ever going to be on that show. Uh, And tonight we had what are your questions for us as we talk about the community and the website? Uh, and last time I checked, we had two out there. So I want to talk about those and you guys can address these because you're way smarter than I am. But the first one uh, came from John Lutzi, who's a beast of a player, by the way, in the online game. He's he's tough. Uh, he just kind of a basic question. Is there been, had been any talk about a mobile app? Um, wondering uh, if either from the technical side or from your guys' perspectives, thoughts on doing something mobile uh, with rec dot poker. Yeah, well, I know there was uh, the we don't have plan we don't have concrete plans for an app. We are working on the mobile functionality, and I think it's it's something that as we progress, that's going to be more and more of a priority. But uh, uh, Mark's been doing a great job adding widgets and gizmos to the uh, online <laughs> to the mobile browser uh, interface so uh, I think that's that's pretty exciting yeah just chime in on that right now the the website will work on your your mobile device you know and a tablet you know laptop desktop anything like that um, and then as far as like a native mobile app um, I, I can't speak for uh, for Steve and the core team but there's there's possibilities there if, if the if the demand is there I'm, I'm sure there's ways to get it done so 
Yeah, I think even even if it's just the content to be someone to look at it in some way just to get the content into a into a mobile app, uh, that'd be amazing. Mr. Somsky? I was just going to mention, you know, I, I'm uh, the type of person I sit here in front of a computer that has three uh, screens on it. And that's kind of the way I tend <laughs> to do most of my business stuff. So let us know, you know, particularly the stuff that I'm producing, I'm doing it on a large screen monitor all big expanded if it doesn't look good on mobile we need to look make it look good on mobile as well that's where you know 80 percent of our traffic is going to be coming from so let us know if anything doesn't work on mobile because our goal is definitely to make sure that the website and everything looks good and works well with the mobile device love it yeah thanks john rob did you have something yeah i'm, I'm like john i'm sitting here in front i have two laptops in front of me Four, actually, four screens total in front of me here. So, <laughs> but I know at your, that at your age. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm over sixty, believe it or not, <laughs> and I can still handle multiple screens. It's amazing. And and gifs, Steve. And it's GIFs. possible. I could put gifs on. You know, I could do all this stuff. Anyway, I just noticed that when uh, Poker Stars came out with a uh, able to put the home game on a mobile app. People were going crazy. People were going nuts. They just wanted that. They they really loved that. So there's a lot of people that connect with their phones. I mean, they're doing it with their with their smartphones today. Um, I've always been a computer user from day one. I very rarely use my phone to connect on the internet for anything. I I follow you know I look at Twitter occasionally, but if I'm gonna look at an email, I'm gonna do it on my laptop. That sort of thing. So, but there's a ton of people out there that they connect with their phones because it's so it's right there. It's immediate. You can get at it right now. So I think if there's a possibility in the future of putting an app out there, I think a lot of members of the community would really embrace that and jump on it. Love it. Yeah. So if you guys are, that are listening have feedback on that and Chris, I'll get to you in a second. Yeah. You go to the, go to the discussion forum uh, under the podcast questions and this, this topic uh, tonight's discussion, uh, add your thoughts to John, what John started there in there and let us know what it is that you want to see or, or see improved or whatever, Chris. Yeah. I was just going to say like, I mean, like it's, it's great. Cause I have, I also have multiple screens in front of me and all that kind of stuff. But like, you know, I think one of the ways I, I think this um, right now we're in this sort of unique time in the world. And I hope there's a time very soon where we're back mm. playing live poker again. And that's certainly where, um, I'd love to be able to have like a uh, running deep in this on some forum or yeah. had a hand in this and right, you know, like, and th those would be the kind of things where I'd definitely be, you know, using the more of the mobile kind of stuff. And I think our community would as well. So, you know, it, it's something I think, you know, we probably want to look at and I, I, you know, we'll, we'll kind of figure it out as we, as we get, as the world changes and we try to change with it. Yeah. That, that's a great point. Cause you know, we are using discord. We still use discord. It, it's still mm -hmm. a good on-ramp tool, but yeah, we we're using a lot of that Discord for the live thing, giving the updates on, on there, and people were following and that sort of thing. And uh, you know, the, the conversation came up on Discord: is this going away? Uh, whatever. You know, my my guidance on Discord is no. We're we're still planning on using Discord, uh, but the meat of the conversations are going to happen inside the the membership. Uh, it's very hard to manage and and really uh, give input into into two different. Uh, I guess, area to different sites, I guess. So I still use Discord. We'll still have announcements. We'll still be doing some things out there. Uh, but as far as getting into the deeper conversations and getting engagement from uh, the panel, getting engagement from the pros that are jumping on there, uh, most of that is going to happen inside of the forum. So uh, that's sort of my, my perspective uh, on that deal. And we had another, uh, so Danny's actually on here, but he had submitted a question. I want your guys' feedback on this. I think it's an interesting question. Uh, first of all, I like how he addresses himself as the unofficial Superman, but he says, how can we collectively help to build this community? And I love this start, how he starts the question because yeah, right. I mean, I see fist pumps on the screen. Like, like that's it. Like, first of all, we, how can we, there's ownership. And I love that because that's what this whole thing is about. So Danny, thank you for catching the vision right away and, and, and growing with us. But how can we collectively help to build this community? If members would like to promote rec poker, how would you like us to do so? I think we can never have too many opinions with poker and many of us want to help grow this community and maybe even make a few new friends along the way. How do you see all of that happening? 
What do you guys think? What, what advice do you have for folks like Danny and others that are saying, you know what, I, I want to build relationships myself, but I also want to help build this community. People need to know about this. There's too many lonely people out in the world that need to get connected to a community. How do we tell people about this thing? What do you guys think? John? Well, I think the first and primary most important thing is to just participate in the community. Um, as you do that, you know, and notice other people's accomplishments. Um, we had someone mm -hmm. who said, you know, I heard my name said on the podcast because I won the home game. Or, you know, if you see their, their announcement, make a comment to them saying, hey, nice job in that. Or, God, I can't believe you sucked out on me with those pocket tens <laughs> versus my aces or whatever it might be. But being part of the community is the first and most important thing. And then, you know, once you start to like it, tell other people that you think might like it as well. Love that. Yeah. Any, any other Josh, thoughts? Josh is saying in the chat that the first step is to get members to take ownership. And I think that's one of the things that we are doing really well because the, the rec poker nation is a solid group. We are, we have each other's backs. We believe in the word we're trying to spread and I think you're right. So the, the real question is like, what can we do to make it easier for individual members to spread the word? What are the tools and resources that you need that would make it easier for you to tell your friends and family? Is it a, is it a code that gets them five bucks off their first month? Is it a video from one of us saying these are the things that we love about Rec Poker that you could send to your friends? Is it uh, like a page on the site where you could show them, send them a link to with a bunch of hype stuff about how great we think, we think the program yeah. is? You know, What are the resources that you think would help you spread the word about what we're all about here at Rec Poker? Let us know. Go into the forums and tell us. Yeah. We're listening. Chris, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and similarly, I mean, I think let us know, you know, who, who we're missing too. Like, I mean, and, and help us, help us try to reach those people. I mean, I know that there's people who in my life who don't take poker as seriously as I do, but I think, uh, like the game they like to you know when we could get together back in the old days you know we, we we played in some home games and it wasn't like the serious home games that i play in sometime other times but you know just people who got together and liked the game of poker every once in a while and i think we want to reach those people too we want to reach people uh across the spectrum anyone who sort of wants to either you know get really serious about poker or just kind of wants to you know really connect about a game they like to play every once in a while and i think if there's ways we can reach all those different sort of interest levels, skill levels, uh, let us know, let us know. And I think let's let, and help us out, you know, help us reach out to your home games, to your buddies who, who like to play every once in a while, but maybe don't know some of the intricacies of GTO and all that other stuff. <laughs> um, we, we want, we want everybody, uh, a part of this who's, who's kind of got an interest in it. And, and I love, I mean, I, I'm sort of just, now I'm thinking out loud a little bit, but, you know, we, we call this thing rec poker. We have from the beginning, the goal was really, you know, to geared toward the recreational player, the people that are less experienced than the professionals, the people that are doing it as a hobby. And, and it still is, uh, but it, it's been interesting to see the spectrum of people that are, that are buying into this thing, you know, including the pros. You know, we were just on the Poker News podcast, and they were so excited about what we were doing uh, because of, of that. And it's almost like the recreational has, has started to mean something different than experience level. It's, a, it's, it's almost like a state of mind. Like rec poker is a, a state of mind. It's, it's, a, it's a recreational approach to the enjoyment of the game more than it is like skill level. Does that make sense? You couldn't, you couldn't have said it better, Steve. And I think people really are starting to make that turn. And I think, especially over the last 10 years, as training materials have become more available online and people, there's been sort of a democratization of learning for some of this stuff, um, I think people understand that the difference between recreational players and professional players is less, the skill gap is diminishing and it's more about mm. the attitude. And I think, I, think, I think you're absolutely correct. And I would put some of our rec poker players up oh. against anybody we've got mm -hmm. some wizards uh, on our team here that uh, I, you know they've got nothing to prove against uh, p professional poker players just because they're not doing it for, for a living um, and I think it, it really has to do with why are you here are you here to have fun are you here to enjoy the game you know those are the kind of people I want to be playing poker with well said yeah and I, I mean just to add to that too and I think there's a reason why it the pros that we've talked to have been so interested in this because, you know, I think they get a little burnt out 
with mm -hmm. the the poker grind and it is sort of refreshing to like to encounter a group of people who just really are you know who bring them back to that point in, when they fell in love with the game in the first place and like you know I, I think that we all bring that to this it's sort of infectious we're really excited about the game we're really excited to talk to other people who want to play who want to learn who want to you know grow and and that's i think a really exciting thing yeah and i i mean i'll give a first-hand account of that and i hope he's okay with i share of my me sharing this i think he is adam friedman so we just had Adam Friedman on. He's a three-time WSOP bracelet winner, mixed games. Uh, you know, we were talking on the phone uh, a few times, and he was just like, I just got so burnt out playing the game. Like, he goes through these periods where he's just, he'll take months off because he's just so burnt out. Uh, and I said, yeah, okay, that's fine. Because I was, I was asking him if he wanted to play the, play the game with us, play the tournament with us. He's like, oh, I'm just so burnt out. But then, you know, after the podcast conversation, after another conversation, he's like, when is that game? I think I want to play with you guys. He just wanted to hang out with regular people, um, which, which sounds funny, right? But I think he really, and now the tournament ended up going way too late, but, but he just, he loved it. You know, I heard from him. He, he loved just hanging out and whatever, no money on the line, but giving it his all for this free game. And so I think that's, that's one example. And I think that is sort of a, a compelling piece of this is uh, we have people stopping by these things, you know, Moneymaker, Maria Ho, Lexi Gavin, Daniel Negrano, these people that are just sort of like, I want a piece of that. And I, I know part of it you think, well, that's probably their brand. They're trying to build their brand. And who knows, that could be part of it, but they certainly don't need to do that. Uh, so I think there is something in the water here uh, that, that we're doing a little bit different that people are excited about. And you can see it in the pros when, when cause we, we don't prep our guests at all for these conversations <laughs> usually usually the first time that we are sharing a screen with them is like a second before we press record yeah. and uh when they when when the, you can see the expression on their face is changing throughout the thing and uh you know sometimes they'll stick around beyond afterwards and it's i i can't believe the the guy the people that we've got like 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 i was saying with steve earlier poking around in the forums and stuff in the site they're exhilarated to be there they love this this yeah. energy and this passion for the game that's you know for a lot of these people that are they're really technicians at this point you know mm -hmm. uh what's that line from uh friends you know rachel if i see one more cup of coffee today i swear um it's i think it's it's refreshing and it's uh it's something that you can only get when you don't do it 80 hours a week uh so now know, did, because because life's on the line for sure did, did friends just get released in canada did that just finally get released up there at Ross and Rachel, I think there's something going on there. I'm I think worried, they're yeah, going to no, end no spoilers, up. Guys. I don't know. There's something about something about those two. They've got chemistry. I'd watch out for those two. <laughs> oh, that's well said. Well, you know, we, you know, I hope this doesn't come across. We're patting ourselves on the back. That's not the point. The point is trying to really communicate the culture of of who we are, what we're doing. And it's funny because we we mentioned this at the beginning that you know the website is not the community. And now we spent the last how many minutes not talking about the website because it really is a it's a supporting tool of it so let's let's bring it back to the website a little bit um I, I really want the world to know more about who mark Bershawn is he he did not ask me to do this i said mark i i just think mark has had so much value and for those of you who are using the website who have in the past and are now going to experience it in the future you're gonna be like okay this is amazing this is friendly and and i, I just i don't know i just i just want the world to know a little bit more about mark and mark if you don't just share uh, kind of a bit about more about who you who you are, what you do, uh, whatever you want to share. Yeah, that's really kind of you. I'm not sure how much of that is true, but I'll uh, I'll share a little not, bit. None of it, me. but just go ahead anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm born and raised in Michigan. Uh, starting make, making websites from uh, it's been 20 years now. I just realized and uh, drifted in and out of different companies. Worked with you know Fortune 500, Inc. 500 stuff. Uh, I, I do websites full time. I love it. It's a lot of fun to tinker with it. Um, it and poker are my number one, uh, you know, passions, things that I'm excited about where I can just, you know, open up a laptop and, and go to town for hours. Yeah. And so you, you've got this company that you started, Website Amp, which you guys recognize the name. We, we, we talk about it every week. We mention Website Amp. That's, that's Mark's deal. Uh, so what, what are you hoping to do with that deal? Yeah, it's a website design agency. So whether that's, um, you know, a redesign or developing something from scratch or, oh, I don't know, building a poker community. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, some some folks just want a, a fancy looking, you know, splash page for their, their, their resume or themselves as just an individual. 
So it's really, you know, wide open businesses, individuals, organizations, that sort of stuff. And, and when you're working with people who are, because they're bringing you in because you're the technician in this case, you're the one with all the savvy. Um, and often it's going to be people like me that really just don't know that much about it. They just have this vision. Um, what's the most important thing that people should be thinking about when they're building a website or when they're trying to envision a website or explain that vision to you? Is there one thing or one aspect of it that's more important than the rest? Yeah, I would say that the number one thing is that your website, whether you're an individual, business, community, whatever, is your number one influencer, especially if you don't have one at all. And so what I mean by that is, uh, you know, there's plenty of surveys and stats that go out, but like, for example, 56% of people won't trust a brand without a website. Mm. And so whatever your brand is, whatever your, your online presence is trying to be on the internet, if you don't have your own website, there's a real lack of um, trust and confidence there. So that's on the bad side. On the plus side, websites work 24 seven for you. They don't take lunch breaks. They're your number one marketing person, your number one salesperson. So the uh, the potential is really huge for websites. And and we're all recreational players here. So like I have a, I have a day job. Most of these guys are either retired or they've got real jobs and um, I'm a small business owner. And when I see a company represented by someone they send me their email and their email is you know acme at hotmail.com um i know that that's a functional choice that they've made but i also think you know if these guys were in the big leagues they'd have their own url and their own email address and that kind of thing um and i'm sure that's that's just the kind of polish that mark's going to bring but even ways that you might think oh well we're still getting the job done here you, you might not be making the kind of impression on people that you could be making and that opportunity cost is going to be setting you back. Uh, make a better impression than you think you even could make. And Mark's the guy that's going to help you figure out the way to do that. Yeah, I'd say the, the, the last thing I'd say about this is it just dawned on me how, like, you are to website, sort of like how a lot of the rec poker players are to poker. Like, I think, you know, we come off as fun. We enjoy the game. We sit at the table. We're hanging out. We're chatting people. But, but let's get go. Let's go. You know, let's let's play this game. Uh, we can. We got the technical skills. We got the ability, and we're going to take your chips. You know, sort of like that. I, I feel like the same way with you, Mark. Like you're this, you're this super nice, fun guy, incredible personality, great patience, has an amazing temperament for this. But when we get into the weeds, man, you're like, oh no, no. You, you can make it happen. Like, oh yeah, we can make <laughs> that happen. We can do this plugin. We can make this change. We can add gifts. We can, you know, it, it's it's sort of like that, and so. Uh, man, I, I've been overly impressed, um, and I've worked with a few website designers at, at how you're able to sort of have this calm demeanor. You look like you're 12 years old, but <laughs> <laughs> good God, uh, can you make a website happen? So uh, I just seriously, I know we, we keep patting you on the back, and you're probably getting sick of that. But you know, let's talk a little bit about just you know, okay, people say, all right, I like Mark, I want to get a hold of him. Maybe I got some questions about building my own site, or I've got somebody I know that should be talking to Mark. How do they get a hold of you? Yeah, I mean, the easiest is WebsiteAmp.com. It's just WebsiteAmp.com. Um, I'm also on Rec Poker at Website Mark, and I play on Poker Stars at Website Mark, too. So if you wanted to, you know, find me in the, the forums and connect with me there or go to my website, uh, however you want to connect, that's I'm, I'm happy to, to talk websites or talk poker. Those are both probably <laughs> fun it. to me. Yeah, if you can talk both, that's the that's the sweet spot. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. that's the that's the sweet spot. Yep. I think and that's how we got them. That's how we got them for us working for us. It was like, okay, we can line it up here. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, we didn't get them for websites. Like he was he was plugged in before. I'm like he, I think, no, I think at some what... point, some point, like this guy in Texas said, "Well, if you ever need help with anything, let me know." And I think I was like, "Oh, okay." So kind of what what's your deal? And I build a website. Oh, <laughs> but duly noted. So uh, no, fa fantastic stuff. But um, you know, let let's shift gears, Mark. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, let let's shift gears to the round robins. I think I think hopefully, unless anybody has any final words. I think we've made our point. The website's really, really cool. We haven't gotten into the details. July 29th, uh, Jim, is the night. Uh, we're going to be doing an open discussion. You can get the recording if you're online, but also you can join us live, right? That's, that's a live event, Jim. People can jump yep. on there. Open to uh, the and we'll public, dig yep. into the And we'll dig into the website, all the details that you want uh, on that night. But uh, I think you guys know, know the vision, uh, a vibrant and encouraging poker learning community. 
the tool is rec.poker. That's what our foundation is built on to build this community. Uh, if you have any questions of any kind, anybody in the panelist here is, is more than happy to answer your questions. Uh, and we're all got the, the John at Rob at Jim at Chris at Mark at rec.poker. So uh, we're not too hard to find. We're not going to hide from people. So uh, get, get a hold of us that way. But any other final words, guys? Otherwise, we'll go into the round robins. All right, great stuff. Let's let's do that. Mark, you're more than welcome to hang around if you have to get going. Perfectly fine. But yeah, feel free to chime in if you want to stick around. But uh, let's let's do this, guys. Let's go around the around the horn a little bit here and uh, figure out what's going on uh, in the nation. Mr. Somsky, as per always, everybody wants to know what's going on in the home game. So let's hit you first. Well, uh, first thing, August fifth will be the next No Limit Hold'em series next month. Uh, July 8th was our mixed game horse series. It, as Steve alluded to earlier, ran a little long. It was a whopping seven hours. So uh, that's a lot of basketball. Oops. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Poker Stars has changed their structure of the home game tournaments, and they have different options for your blind levels and the amount of chips you have. Uh, so, anyway, it ended up being longer than I had anticipated. I'm going to make some adjustments going forward when we have limit games, so that hopefully it'll rain the time in. Plus, we had bit. a huge crowd. I mean, that those oh, yeah. We, right? yeah, it was 72 players. That's yeah. a record for us. We've never had 72 players play. I think this somewhere in the 60s was our record prior to that. Pro uh, tip: Pro tip. If you don't know what you're doing, it only lasts 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Jones, Jones and I were like texting, like, "Look at those fools! Those fools last until whatever." And I told Friedman. Friedman asked me, like, "How long do you think it'll be?" I said, "Well, I don't know. I, I don't know how long mixed games horse tournaments last. I don't know." I said, "The the home the the no limit tournaments are like three hours, you know." And so he's like, "Okay, I'll play." <laughs> well, what was Adam. interesting is is he was sitting there. And we were on the final table, and he was uh, Humble saying things like, it's about Adam, not about me. Um, anyway, he was saying things like, you know, no, I'm focused. I've, I'm My competitive mode has kicked in. I really want to win this thing. You know, trying to win a free tournament. And yeah. everyone who is playing has that <laughs> level of motivation, not necessarily that level of skill, but that level of motivation. Guys um, won $3.1 million on Hendon Mob. Is just desperately wanting to win the rec poker home game. That's pretty cool. Hey, John, who, yep. who busted Freedom? Yeah, how did that go for him? him? How'd that finish? Well, actually, you know, I took him out. Yeah, Zomsky, the mixed game <laughs> ringer. We bring him in for the, the wrecking mixed crew. Games. <laughs> the wrecking crew. Yeah, although I went out shortly after he did, so my uh, <laughs> it didn't last too much longer for me. Uh, we had John Let Letzi whose yeah. real name He's is also great. John Lutze. He's great. Uh, that's his very first rec poker win. There you go, John. So, and Overdue, a, John. Overdue. Yeah, a great tournament to pick is your first win. And then yeah, you course, got, to, got to beat a record field and a three-time bracelet winner? Come on. Happy yep. birthday, John. Later on tonight will be the June uh, Tournament of Champions, and we will be recording that to... Uh, record some chat and thoughts over it later. And then our uh, Rec Poker Nightly Series winners, July 6th, we had John Lancer, known real name John Bensky, for his second Nightly Series win. Will Hogan, Lauren Gullickson, got his first Nightly Series win. Nice. On Way to go, Lauren. July 7th. Uh, July 9th, Captain Walleye, Rob Ansom, got his third no uh, nightly series win. And then on July 10th for Will Hogan comes back, Lauren Gullickson for his second night series, nightly series win. He got his first and his second in the same week. In the same week. In, just wow. three days apart. John, poor John's interrupted all the time. I got to, I mean, I could say something about every single player here. You know, I'm going to start calling Rob, Rob handsome is what I'm going to do there. But, but Lauren Gullickson, <laughs> So I've known Lauren for a while. We worked at Allianz together. Super nice guy, like a real gentleman of the game. Just unbelievably nice guy. And I think last week I talked about how I think Doug Drabeck is the luckiest player I've ever played with. And that's not a slam. That's just, it seems like whenever I'm at the table, Doug, like he always hits the kicker or whatever it is. Lauren is like the unluckiest player I've ever played with. Like I played in these home games with him where it's like time after time, he just gets throttled, like unbelievably gross, you know, gut shot stuff all the time. And so I was so excited when he got his first one. Then I saw he got a second one. I'm like, yeah, baby, let's go. So very happy for Lauren. 
Then on uh, July 11th, Flying Bricks' Sarah Hansen got her first nightly series victory. And on July 12th, Eric Molina, Rob Raritan, got himself into the five-win club with his fifth nightly series wow. victory. That is rarefied air, Rob. That is rarefied air uh, for Rob Burton. There's not many in the four-plus club, are there, John? I really like that update post that you sent out where we could all kind of yeah. see who the who the lead dogs are, and that's that's some yeah. tough competition. I'll, I'll probably do something like that every few months just so yeah. we can kind of keep track of what's going on. Yeah, if you missed it, it was something like yeah, 128 tournaments we played and 61 unique winners and how many wins everybody had. So that was that was super fun. And quick shout out to Sarah Hansen too. She's been knocking on the door too. She finally got that W. So way to nice. go, way to go, John, man. Uh, you're you're crushing this thing uh, as far as keeping track of all of this, especially for us nerds. We love this stuff. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot of fun. And he's even volunteered to record the Tournament of Champions tonight because he didn't have something better to do. That's so nice of him. What a gentleman. Who's in? Who's well, in tonight? My punishment for not qualifying. It is. Who's in tonight? I'm in. Who's I in tonight? One. I'm in. J- just the two of us, Jim? Oh, it's just you and me. You and I me, won't buddy. Be in. I won't be in for uh, for the next one, I don't think. But we'll see. But I'm in tonight, baby. We'll see. we got some yeah. time. I'm looking forward to breaking that final table down in our stretch chat at the end of the month. That's going to be exciting. So you got to yeah, make it Yeah, if you guys don't far. know, we record that. Yeah, John's going to record that because John didn't make the tournament. If, we didn't, if, didn't, we, if that wasn't clear, John did not qualify. Uh, <laughs> He has like yeah, five think- wins. He doesn't need to qualify every month. But so John's going to record that. And then, yeah, then we're actually going to break down the final table of the TOC. So uh, we're going to kind of repurpose that for, for that. That's going to be super fun, too. I'm a little nervous if I make the final table that I'm going to get railed on. But, hey, it's a safe community. Uh, we just said that. So be careful, guys. All right. Uh, Rob, how about you? What's going on? Well, we've got the uh, third session of the book study. The game plan with Matt Matros coming up on Wednesday at 6.30, Wednesday, July 15th. Um, we're still on the pre-flop portion of the book, um, but we're going to be going through rules five, six, and seven um, on Wednesday. And a lot of good discussion. We've had some people join us from the community. Um, and Jim's been there each time, so he knows we end up going down some rabbit holes, and we have a lot of fun, a lot of good discussion. Um, we're talking about everything uh, that we could possibly think of that has to do with poker and has to do with this book, has to do with just about anything, really. So it's a lot of good discussion, a lot of fun. Um, welcome everybody to j- come in and join us because it's just a good time. And and how great is it that uh, some of the members, uh, Jack Burke was there, brought some study material for all, us all to work with. And so he's he's looking at these hand ranges in like a spreadsheet form and you've got them in this grid form. And so we're really kind of all bringing our different ways of learning into the study group together. And uh, I found that, I thought that was really cool because there are so many different ways to think about this kind of information. And if you can look yep. at it in a few different ways, it's, it makes it easier to learn. Yeah, and you guys right. put those, those PDFs out on the out on the post too, so people can can have access right. to all that material as well. Yep, yep, yeah. And I think that uh, the this game plan and the way that Matt Matros has set up this the whole thing, it's a system, right? So you don't really have to be uh, a a real experienced poker player to take this system and actually make it work for you. So it's really it's really it lends itself to the rec poker player. Somebody that's just kind of dipping their toes in the water a little bit and just having some fun with the game, but they want to do just a little bit more than they've been doing. You take, take the system and it just starts, it just starts making a lot of things happen and you don't have to, you don't get caught up in, in the decisions of, Oh, what do I do here? What do I do there? He's laid it all out. You know what you have to do. It's just, it's, you do this or you do that and it's done. And so I assume, unless your name is Chris Jones, you should just always fold pocket fives anytime. Uh, I think that's I think that's rule number one. It's uh, okay. <laughs> always pull fold pocket fives pre flop. Unless, unless you're Chris it's Jones, w- <laughs> it's wise unless, unless you're me. You, you just don't you don't want to mess with them unless you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything else, Rob? Really good stuff. Oh, Thanks for your it. leadership. Nah, awesome. Fun times. I know Andrew couldn't make it tonight. Uh, Jim, did you want to uh, jump in there for, for Andrew? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually not sure which learning partners he's got set up this week, but it's always a chalk lineup. Um, I think Solve for Why and maybe Learn Pro Poker 
And ba- just in case you don't know, what happens is Andrew picks something that is behind a paywall of these one of these premium training sites. And uh, if you remember at Rec. Poker, we just take you behind the curtain for free. And you get to go and watch this 15-minute clip of something that other people are paying hundreds of dollars for. And, uh, and then we release that video uh, the next week for the members that couldn't make it live. But if you do make it live, you really get to interact with the material. And you can even give Andrew, like, look, we're doing this again in two weeks. Here's what I'd like to see at Solve for Why. Um, and get, get Andrew working for you. We're all working for you here at Rec. Poker. And let's find out exactly the stuff that's, that's most interesting to you. Uh, but learning with partners, yeah, I'm I'm really getting a, as a recreational player, I'm really getting a lot out of sort of peeking in at what these real wizards are doing because it's it's next level stuff. You know, I think we we get a lot of great comments about the seminars. Uh, we don't get as much interaction right now with learn the learning with with partners and the book study. I know people that are part of the book study, they, they love it. But I think those are the two things that those are my sleepers, right? Those are the ones that I think in like six months from now, people are going to be like, oh my god you got to go direct out poker because this learning with partners thing is amazing. And the fact that you can talk about it and then the book studies are like that, that is who we are. Uh, so I just think those are, those are my, those are my sleepers in, in the race that uh, in six months from now, I think those are going to be the ones that people are really pointing to. Good stuff. Uh, all right. Uh, Jonesy. Yeah, no, th- just to add to that, those both are so good. And, uh, you know, it's to be able to have all the behind the scenes stuff is um, is so great. And there's so much good content in books. And it's so great to learn that in community. But um, in terms of uh, the seminars coming up, uh, July, uh, we're, we're plugging away with our, our bluffing. Hopefully people are watching or about to watch or thinking about watching or have watched part of and going to finish. <laughs> uh, but that was a bluffing. And uh, the flip side for August is going to be value. And I think value is one of these things that I'm really excited to talk mm-hmm. about. I think it's one of these things that gets overlooked. It feels like, oh, it's so easy to play aces. It's so easy to uh, play when you flop a set. It's so easy to whatever. And um, it's not <laughs> because <laughs> right. I think a lot of us are leaving value on the table. I think sometimes we get into yeah. tricky spots with value hands. We don't know how to play them, especially out of position. So we're going to be talking about all the ways that we can extract more value out of all the spots we find ourselves in. And I think it's going to be a really uh, good conversation. So looking forward to that for August. Love it. Yeah. I've, I've said that for a while. That's one of the things when I play with really good players, I just see that. And I'm like, how are they getting value from these hands? Like, and that, obviously that's going to offset some of the, some of the losses that you have. Right. I mean, yeah, we just think, Oh, you flop a set easy game. Well, no, not if you got half the chips you should have gotten out of that hand. Uh, you're not going to flop a set enough to, to make it worth it then if you're not going to get value. So I think it's a phenomenal topic. Uh, I'm excited about that for sure. Um, Jim. Yeah, and, and just to rest on that for one more second, it's that kind of lost money that you don't even know you're losing because it's just like not working with Mark. You don't know how good it could be, and you're just, you've got this opportunity cost. If you're not value betting efficiently, you might even be a break-even or a slightly winning player, and you don't see the losses because they're not coming out of your pocket, but you're leaving money on the table, and you need to maximize that when you have the opportunity to do it because you're not going to be in a position to do it as often as you'd like. So you got to get paid when you have it. So I'm really looking forward to this. Um, and it's the perfect complement to bluffing, uh, and especially when, you know, you get in these spots where you're like, how can I bluff here? I always have it. Okay, well then flip that around. Use the other part of your brain for that. So I can't wait to unlock Chris's brain on this. I'm really looking forward to that. Personally, the thing that I'm most excited about is the wrecking crew. I am definitely you the are. most excited about the. I, I don't know huh. if that's come across in the no. in the podcast episode much. Um, I think the versatility about it is what I like the most. Like John and Rod, we're a perfect mix here tonight. Um, Mark is a huge part of the Rec Poker core team, but he's not on the Wrecking Crew because he doesn't want to share his poker uh, story with the world in the same way that some of us do. Uh, John and Rob are on the Wrecking Crew, and they want to share their story and they want people to reach out to them and they want to be helpful resources in the poker world. And then Chris and I are on the wrecking crew and we actually also offer actual coaching sessions. We offer video reviews and things like that um, where we want to get even more involved and help people learn directly. And uh, so just being able to have all these different ways of getting involved and using the platform, I'm pretty excited about that. I don't know if anyone else here wants to talk about what made the Wrecking Crew interesting to them. But for me, it was just this way of engaging and 
and working directly with people that really knocked my socks off. Yeah, I, I just real quickly, I just love that it's a it's an avenue for people to express themselves. Say, I'm here, Poker World, uh, but then also offer these products. And yeah, you've seen all of all of people that are part of the Reckoning Crew are doing it different differently. Um, you know, some people are doing email coaching, some are video analysis, some are database reviews, some are one-on-one coaching, some are offering group coaching. It's just, it's super interesting to see uh, the different personalities saying, here's what I would like to offer the world. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, it's worth just going out there and you can just meet the wrecking crew. That's one of the things out on the website, meet the crew and you can kind of read all about uh, what everybody's doing. I think it's kind of a cool deal. All right. Well, very good. Well, the, the only thing that I had to add is just the, um, we do this monthly, you know, we, we have the OPA. So if you haven't figured out yet what OPA is, online play and hang, that's OPA. There's two different types of OPAs. There's the OPA open, which is anybody can come and play and hang. So that's, we do that during our regular tournament. It's, is it Tuesday nights, Jim? Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday night, you just play the regular tournament, and we have the Zoom call. If you can get into, the, if you're a, a member, even a free member, you can see the link out there. Uh, you can jump on Zoom, and we just hang out. Uh, if we get enough people, then we do breakout rooms. You can go to the table that you're playing on, yuck it up, come back to the main room, whatever. It's just it's the OPA open, open to anybody. And then we do this once a month uh, OPA. Invi- I'm laughing at myself saying OPA. We do this once a month OPA Invitational. Uh, and that's a single table. We get eight of us together uh, because we want to leave room for a special guest if they happen to drop by. And we just play a single tournament and we just hang out. Um, and it's really more about the hanging out than it is about the play. Like, I remember I played one of them. I'm like, I don't even remember who won. I think I got third, but I don't remember. Key, I think it was one Keto Man. Uh, Kean had won. But yeah, uh, anyway, so we're doing that. that again this, this I think it's the third Wednesday of every month we do it. Uh, we let people know about a week in advance. We draw names out of the people. You have to be a member, uh, not, not necessarily paid, just a free member out on uh, Rec That Poker. And you have to have played in the home game because we have to know that you're able to get into Poker Stars. Uh, and so we just randomly draw people. We, we haven't had to repeat people yet. Hopefully we'll never have to repeat people uh, in the same year. So we invite those people on. And then I'm in the background uh, trying to connect with all these people to see if anybody's available to come to drop by. Uh, and I'm done telling people who's going to drop by because uh, sometimes they don't. And I'm tired of apologizing on their behalf. Uh, let's just say we've got some cool things in the works for Wednesday. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't. Uh, but if, if nobody shows up, we have a blast anyway. So that was a very long introduction to telling you uh, that this Wednesday, uh, the invites are going out to these people. Uh, and if you can't make it, please tell me. And then we just go to the next person. Uh, but myself and Taylor Moss are going to be there from the panel. Sarah Hansen, who just got her first, uh, that's her flying bricks. Uh, Eric Anderson, Jeff Kupferberg. Mark Prashan, I saw your name pop up. I mean, this is ironic, but but you're you're on the list if you're able to make it. Uh, Rob Diesel, Rob Delaney, and Charles Jean. Uh, all of these folks have been great supporters of, of Rec Poker. Know all of them uh, at least a little bit. So those folks will be invited to play. And uh, I hope who's planning on dropping by will actually be able to drop by because it'll be really fun. Um, so anything else that we missed, guys? I know it's it's a longer episode. We we covered a lot of ground. Uh, I don't see anybody nodding their head. So I think we covered everything we need to cover. Go to Poker, sign up for the newsletter. Thanks, Running Aces, Casino Racetrack and Hotel. Thank you, Mark Pershawn and Website Amp. Thank you, Learn Pro Poker. Um, thanks to the panel, uh, Chris, Jim, John, Mark, Rob. Fantastic. Thanks to the folks who jumped on and, and engaged with some questions. Uh, fantastic stuff. And uh, that's it for this week. Uh, we will chat with you all next week. <laughs>